Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Drill Sergeant. And today, I want to share something with you that's really dear to my heart. I was reading Tommy Tenney's book called Finding Favor with the King. And I came across something that I want to share with you today. And it's called Run to Daddy. And the reason this means a lot to me is because my father died when I was four years old, and I had a stepfather, and uh, he was a nice man, but I always knew that my daddy had died um, uh, from cancer and obstruction of the intestines as a little girl, and there was something that I always did, and I do recall this, even though I was young, I would run to my daddy. And so when I started reading this little excerpt out of... Um, this book, like I want to share this with you, and I'm just going to read it. So if you don't mind me reading, I'm just going to read something that's really blessed me today. It says, Run to Daddy. Some forms of worship only release their sweetest fragrance to God when offered from the fires of trial and adversity. Finding favor with the King. Scripture readings here are Acts 16, 25 through 34, where Paul and Silas were beaten and locked up in the Philippian jail. They offered a prayer and praise to God, who delivered them with an earthquake, after which the jailer and his entire household became believers. Sometimes the things that we go through cause those others that are standing by and watching us to turn and give their lives to God. It just depends on how you handle your situations. So this says, turn and run to daddy. A mentality is afoot in some sectors of the church today that teaches believers to expect an easy road in life. Just have faith and everything will be fine. If you're sick, Struggling with your finances or having problems on the job or in relationships, it's because you don't have enough faith. How many of you have been told that? Christians are overcomers. Life should be a breeze. There's one thing wrong with this attitude it flies in the face of reality. Christians sometimes go bankrupt. Christians sometimes get cancer. It doesn't mean that God can't heal them or he can't deliver them. I'm just reading this to you. Christians lose their jobs. Trials and adversity are real, even for believers. They touch every one of us and they hurt and they usually have nothing to do with your faith level. Again, I'm just reading this. How do you handle adversity in your life? Do you gripe and complain about your lot? Oh, woe is me. Do you challenge or question God? Why are you letting this happen to me? Or why did this happen to me? I know some of you have been like this. I have. I've had a lot of stuff happen to me. Says, or you do, or do you view trials as an opportunity to grow and draw closer to your heavenly Father? Children who get a cut or a scrape run to mommy or daddy for comfort and the kiss that will make it all better. Love is given and received. And bonds deepen between parent and child during such times. In the same way, trials and hard times should propel us into our Father's arms. Not cause us to run the other way or in the opposite direction, which is what some of us want to do. We run away. Faith is one thing. Expecting faith to shelter us from all difficulty and hardship is another. It just won't happen. 
Jesus, in fact, told us the opposite. If the world, he says, hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Remember the word that I said to you. This is what Jesus said. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. It has nothing to do with faith. However, he also tempered this grim news with a great promise. This is what Jesus says. In the world, you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome the world. Trials and adversity are part of life in a fallen world, particularly for Christians or those who are believers, because the name Christian has been so muddled now. Folks are doing everything calling themselves Christians. I want to be Christ-like. I don't want just the name or the label of a Christian. I want to be one that carries the word of Christ, the anointed one. And it says, because we are on assignment in what? Enemy territory. Drill sergeant, you are in enemy territory. They are the purifying flames that our loving Father will use to cleanse us, to burn away all of our impurities and shape and strengthen us for us service. God's getting you ready for service in his name. If we will let him, the trials of life can either make us or break us, depending on our response. When Paul and Silas languished in that prison in Philippi, their feet tight in the stocks and their backs bruised and bleeding from their beating, they could have moaned and groaned after the unfairness in life. Instead, at midnight, they were praying and singing hymns to who? God our Father. They turned their pain into praise and their soars into songs of joy. In the midst of tribulation, their jubilant worship went up as a sweet-smelling fragrance of faith and love, and the Father's deliverance came down and literally shook the earth. There was a mighty earthquake. The fragrance of their worship permeated those around them, including the jailer and his family. And guess what it did? It changed their life forever. Glory to God. Ooh, I like this story. Athletes understand the truth of no pain, no gain. They know that in order to grow stronger, their muscles must be stressed and stretched to the painful breaking point in exercise so new tissue will what generate god's trying to generate new tissue inside of you we cannot grow without pain and resistance let me say that again you cannot grow without pain and resistance it's a fact of life God uses our trials and tribulations and hardships to draw us to who? Him. He says, don't run away from me. Run to me. Glory to God. He said, I use that to bring you into maturity and to prepare you for greater things. Our willing worship in times of tribulation is a sweet fragrance to God that brings him near. He says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. But if you stay back from me, 
God says, I will stay back from you. So what do we want to do? We want to draw near to God and watch him draw near to us. It's easy to praise God when things are going well. When was the last time you worshipped God? When was the last time you spent some time in praise to God and thanksgiving for the things that he has done? Not spend so much time complaining about what we want God to do for us. It says, worship him during the hard times. Try viewing your trials and adversity as opportunities for praise and for worship and for growth. When life hurts, don't run the opposite way. Run to daddy. Father, sometimes life hurts. And our first impulse is to turn our backs and to run away. I know you love me. And I know that you want to use even the bad times and the sad times to draw me in closer to you, closer to your side, and to make me more like you. I'm sorry for worshiping you only when things are going well. Teach me, Father, to worship you at all times. And let my worship be a sweet fragrance rising to your throne. I thank you, God, that in times of adversity, I have run to you as my daddy. And I thank you, Father, that those people who don't have a natural father will learn to run to you, will learn to trust you, even in the sad times, even in the hard times. You have to know. I remember the day when I found the scripture that says, God bottles all of our tears. And I was thinking to myself, because they used to call me a crybaby. Oh my God, I bet God has so many bottles of my tears. And he takes those tears and he spreads them on the altar before him and they go up into his nose or into his nostril as a sweet smelling savor or a sweet sweet smelling aroma and I thank God that I know I must smell awfully sweet to God because I've shed a whole lot of tears but I've also learned that it has empowered me to a level that I would never go back even David when he lost his son and laid down on the earth and on the ground, weeping and moaning and praying that God would recover his son and restore his son. But then when he realized that his son was dead and God said, get up, wash your face, get on up, wash your face. He said, well, I got stuff I got to do. And God gave that to me one day in the middle of one of the hardest time of my life in grief. And I heard the Lord say, get up, wash your face now. Morning time is over. It's time for some of us to get up and wash our face and get on back to doing what God has called us to do. There's no one greater than his own master. And if our master had to go through some things, I want you to be encouraged. If you're going through something right now, God is in the midst of the fire with you. Just like he was with the three Hebrew boys. He said, he looked in the fire, and behold, there was a fourth one in there with him. And it looked like what? It looked like the Son of God. God is in your battle with you today. God bless you. Run to Daddy.